Oh, crap. That sucks. What's going on guys? Welcome to today's video. So you're probably wondering why I have this bag in my hand and this electrical wiring harness in my hand as well. Well, to answer your question, I'm sitting in a OEM right-hand drive Toyota Supra seat. These seats in Japan for the passenger side, which is the driver's side in Japan, these seats came with motors. So your back can be adjusted as well as, you know, you moving forward and backward. So because I am putting these in my SC300, the driver's side now turns to passenger side and the passenger side turns into the driver's side. Fortunately for me, the driver's side comes as a manual adjustment. So there's a little adjustment handle on the bottom of the chair and then there's a little lever on the side where you adjust, you know, front and back as far as like where you want your back to be positioned. So now to this seat, has motors. Unfortunately, when you have electronic motors and gears in an older car, things start to just crumble. I will be honest with you guys, this is my third time replacing these gears. These are basically worm gears. You can get these on Yamivity, a totally awesome guy uh, that has a Land Cruiser. I uh, figured that these worm gears would be needed for, I believe it's Land Cruiser MR2, the Supra obviously. A lot of the Toyota vehicles had these worm gears fail because they're plastic. So in the gear, there's a metal worm gear going against the plastic ones. The metal deteriorate the plastic after it pushes into it, shred apart. First, I did one side because I didn't know there was the other side. That was short lived, so she ordered two and I replaced this gear, but then I didn't replace this gear right off the bat. And it worked for a little bit and then it stopped. I then found out the metal threads basically shredded into the plastic ones. I got two more and I'm replacing both of them at the same time. If it doesn't, I'm giving up, throwing in the towel and these seats won't be moved, which will suck because not only are the bolts super hard to reinstall the seats if you can't adjust them, I want these to move. It's going to happen. So let's get into today's video. All right, so the first thing we're gonna have to do, is gonna tilt it over to the back side. So on this side, which is gonna be the, or this side right here, is gonna be where like the center console is. There's gonna be a couple of 12s. And then there is one bolt here and then one bolt on the other side. So go ahead and take those out. So now that we have this bracket out, we just have to take this bolt and this bolt out. And then this whole bracket will uh, fall out of place. That's gonna be on uh, one side. There's a bolt right in here. That bolt moves the threads, which adjust the seat so the rails adjust. So it's gonna have to adjust it all the way. It came out without, and that piece that goes between the two. There we go. And uh, there's two washers that go this side. Thing about these washers, is that this one has a bigger inner diameter so it slips over and then this one has a smaller diameter so all right so we're gonna start with this motor two allen key bolts so let me go ahead and find out which one it takes so we're looking at a six millimeter all right so now the motor's out next step is to take that phillips head and that phillips head out with both those screws out we're gonna take this out. 
there is that metal gear right there on the very bottom. So what happens is that gear will be moving against this worm gear. So the teeth on these worm gears, they either will just get chewed off like that or the whole thing will actually split. There seems to be a little bit of plastic stuck in that gear and the last thing I want to do is have that gear bind up. Unfortunately, this one, yeah, you can see that crack. When they crack, they uh, tend to not want to rotate anymore on these knurls. Same knurls as you have on your wheel lugs. Those two right there, I'm gonna open it. I'm going to uh, link in the description of where you can get these. The way these go, three little divots on one side and the other side there's nothing. The three divots, you want to use that side where the divots are and you want to put the opposite side on these knurls. The inside the lip to be matching with the inside lip of this because if this is any wider in diameter, it's going to start to push against the, the worm gear and these are plastic. So any type of contact on the outer side is going to chip away at that plastic and then you're going to damage it. So, so that is the new one pressed on to the knurls. Right, we got a dab on our finger. Move that on the inside. Here we go. And the best thing to do is when it goes in, just make sure it has no play. You're gonna line it up with the holes. Now that that is good, put these bolts back through. Like that there. Awesome, both of them are tight. So now it's time to move on to this gear. I'm gonna go take that out. Alright, I'm gonna take this bolt out. Got it out. This thing pops out of the back. Phillips had screwed in there. There we go. It's gonna slide all the way out. So basically it unlocks the potential for this thing, this whole piece to slide, which will slide it all the way out. Pop this up. There we go. Cool. Pops out. Three screws into us instead of two screws. So I'm gonna wiggle that out so the cover comes out. Another washer right here. All mauled up. That worked. That was easy. There's that. And that worm gear is just not gonna want to stay. Where the damage is doesn't seem to be wanting to stay together. And I have to go get another one of these. I just love how this works out sometimes. We got a new one. The other one, the neurals ended up poking through the plastic and because these are plastic, it broke. So I ended up having to get another one. At this point, I think I'm at like 10 of these already with the price of each one by themselves. It's, uh, let's just say I'm not gonna mess this one up. Let's get to it. All right, you have this and I'll show you guys damage. There you have it, it's on. All right, so I decided to kind of go a little bit deeper into the assembly. I just quickly wanted to interrupt to mention to you guys before you guys go into the comments and say, why didn't you do this to the other side, clear out the uh, metal threads on the other side? I just want to let you guys know I did. I cleaned them out initially while I was doing the first gear the first time. So they were completely cleaned but by the time I was doing the second gear install. I didn't, however, clear out the side I'm working on right now in the video. So that's why I wanted to go in and clear it out. I didn't get a chance to film the first time I did it on the other gear set. So I wanted to take the time to cover this one I'm doing now in the video. So I just want to clear that up for you guys before you rush to the comments and say, you didn't clear it out. Why is there no clips of it clearing out? So now I'm getting clips of it for you now. So I hope that makes sense. I know a lot of People that watch these videos, they kind of want to have like every single step covered because they are following it step by step. I have seen on other content creator videos, their comments, people always mention it for some reason and I just wanted to, before you guys do it, on my video, I want you guys to know that I already did it. So, alright, let's get back to the video. This is the assembly right here and you saw that we took the few screws out. 
So on the top of it, right, there's this screw right here. If you order a cap from the website, then I'd recommend you replace it. There's a lot of plastic debris, I guess is the best way of saying it. Start from the bottom of it and just kind of work your way up. It is quite easy if you have the knowledge and feel confident enough to go in, tinker and see how everything works and then replace at what is needed because then you'll have work and see. Like to be honest with you, I had no idea that you could do this. The guy that I bought the seats off of, he was telling me, not easy, but it's worth it. Just get these gears. I am very glad though that I have manual seats for the driver's seat. Anyways, I'm gonna stop talking story with you guys. If you guys haven't already, smash that like button. It definitely helps with the algorithm. Liking the video definitely helps and it lets YouTube know that you guys find it helpful. Instead of subscribing, if you guys like the content, I would really appreciate that. Join, join the Ohio. This channel is all about growing, you know, working on the cars or, you know, working on the house, whatever it is I can like tinker with or like get my hands on. Um, I just want to get all this stuff done so I don't have to worry about like little projects like this so I can actually wrap myself into deeper projects because I have a bad focusing system. I do have some ADHD, it plays a big part of it, but for me, I know myself that if I like jump into a big project, and don't have the time or like get distracted on something else i'm never going to get done parts get missing so i know myself better than to just jump into a huge project and like shoot myself in the foot so to speak so we will be getting into those projects soon i just want to be able to have the ample time to be able to do it also if i start something and i don't see the end of it i lose all interest so it's just how i am i figured that out in the last few years and we're going to be working around it so thank you guys for listening to my rant let's get back to the video so putting this back together, right? Put some grease on this. I will just drop in like that. With this cap, do not, and I repeat, do not tighten it too tight. Just go until it's finger tight and then just go a little bit more and that's it. This cap is basically the guide point for the rod on the inside. So it's rotating hand tight, like very, very lightly hand tight and then just tighten it a little bit more and you'll be good. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is, uh, this is the ECU for the seat. The part number is for this, if you guys want to get it for your SC, it should come in all SC300 for the stock seat, but it's going to be, and I'll have it down in the description as well. So forums are great. The only problem that I have with forums is that it doesn't get straight to the point. People like to fill the forum up with their opinions and all of that, you know, jazz, right? Instead of going to the forums, I'm hoping this video helps any of you guys that are wanting to do it. What you need on this wiring harness, so I did trim it down pretty substantially. The only wires you really need are gonna be all of this right here from the connection. This is all gonna be stock from your SC300. So uh, blue with white stripe, then blue with black stripe, solid blue, and then white with black stripe. It's these ones on the other side. On the bottom, it's just going to be your red wire, the top first wire, top fourth wire, and then top seventh wire. This goes to your seatbelt, so you don't have your uh, seatbelt sign on. So I do have some zip ties. I'm going to zip it up onto the seat so that it is out of the way and it looks factory because the one thing that I like the most is making everything look like it came from factory even if it looks kind of naked or like the wires look kind of naked you're not going to see them but as long as the chair functions and looks like it's supposed to be there then that is what I'm aiming for. So let's go ahead and start with this. So this is the wire that literally just sits right here. On this side, which is going to be close to the door, there's going to be this bracket, just holding it down like that, right here. So the black bracket sits on top of it and it has two screws. You're going to take all of that off. So after you take this out, all you have to do is just spin it and rotate it. And what that's going to do is it's going to change this position. So obviously you want this one to match this one. You take this backing plate out, take the two screws out and you take the holder plastic out. After you remove the 10 millimeter bolt, um, then you can slide this back and forth. If you want this side to match up with this side, let's get this in the car and let's get this working. All right, so this is the moment of truth. I haven't bolted anything in yet. Stop the video right here. Don't go forward anymore. Once you go down in the comments below, 
and put your guess if it works or not. I hope your guys' predictions are correct. Let's uh, find out right now. Crap. It sucks that it actually works. <laughs> Let's go backwards. Wow. Tighten up these front bolts. I'll finish telling you guys. There we go, cool. Oh, it feels so weird to sit in the side now. Oh, it feels so good having these seats back in. Oh my God. I have right-hand drive Toyota Super Seats and they are so far improved from the SC300 ones that if you have the chance of doing it, I would definitely recommend that. And we have an IS300 steering wheel with a Toyota Celica airbag with a horn that works. Everything takes time. The time that you take to put in to get to where you want to be will be worth it 100%. I'm going to end this video here. I appreciate you guys watching this. It means a lot to me. And uh, if you've gotten this far, definitely smash that like button. It's definitely going to help. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe. It definitely makes me really happy to know that people like watching my content. Comment what the last thing you did that you didn't think you were going to do, but like did it and you were stoked and like you just were in awe that you made it happen. Let me know down in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next episode. And always remember guys, always stay positive and stay true to who you are. Shoots.